Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show and we're getting, we're nearing the end of Geek Week with all this wizardry technology that should catch you, hopefully, some more fish and we're here at Lyndon Lewis Marina up at Shepparton, we're with Craig from Lawrence and he's going to tell me how to catch one of these, these lovely big things with teeth. No, we're going to be talking about radios. When you're at sea you need that safety aspect, you've got to learn about radios. If you've got any form of boat you're going to see, you need the radio. Let's check out with Craig and see what Lawrence supply. So as well as the uh, GPS and fish finding products, Lawrence also produce a range of VHF products. Um, so we have here our, our Link 5 and our Link 8 VHFs. So VHFs are sort of transmit receivers, a way of communicating vessel to vessel, uh, but also they're used for safety. And for, so if you have a problem, you're going to need to contact the Coast Guard to get help. Um, we can see here that both these options have the little DSC distress button. Um, so when these units are linked in with a, a, a picking up a, a signal from a GPS, it will have your, the, the position input and when we press this red distress button that's hidden away under this little, uh, this little flap here, um, it will then send out uh, an autom automated uh, alert which will then be picked up on other vessels with these DSC radios and you select the sort of distress nature that you're in, whether it be a vessel on fire, sinking, and it will beam the position that you're currently at out on that signal and the other vessels and the Coast Guard will be able to pick that up and then map that out and find out where you are and hopefully come and rescue you. But fingers crossed you shouldn't need to get in there and, and, and use this option. Hence why it's, uh, it's covered over with a, a nice little flap here to stop fingers from accidentally pressing it. It's one of those things, don't press the button unless you really, really need it. That's it, yeah. Don't press the big red button. Yeah. Um, the main difference between these two VHFs um, is, that, I mean, a VHF is a VHF, it will transmit, receive, we can change the channels if we want to, um, so you'll have certain channels that the Coast Guard are on, also private channels for marinas and, and yacht clubs, things like that. Um, the Link 8 series that we have down here also has a AIS receiver built into it. So when this is linked in with your plotter, it'll be able to pick up the AIS information that's being transmitted from other vessels. So a lot of commercial vessels have to have these AIS transmitters which send out their um, MMSI number and also details of the vessel, so what sort of vessel they are, what sort of cargo, and it will overlay that data onto one of the chart plotters. So it will give you the vessel, you can then select it, review the name, um, what sort of cargo they're carrying, and it will also, it's, it's a collision avoidance system, so it will give you an alarm. So if that vessel is bearing down on you, it's going to give you an alarm and say, hey, look out, this vessel is heading for you, and you are on a collision course with them at the moment, so you need to, to make a change. That could be, even if you're anchoring a busy ship in Lake, say off the Isle of Wight somewhere, a lot of guys go out in the small boats off the NAB Tower, that's the sort of facility you're going to need. There's lots of big ships there yeah. that would uh, chew you up and spit you out, exactly. basically. Yeah, that's it. So, and, and it's receive only, so it's not going to be transmitting your positions. So you don't have to worry about sending all your hotspots out to all the other fishermen that are around you. You're just there picking up the commercial traffic. So if you've got one of the, the small HDS series which support AIS and you can't justify the cost of having a radar, then you can uh, you can pick up one of these uh, for probably about 250 300 pound and on and the on the handheld side you've got the facility to change channels and volumes and that on the handheld set have you know that that's it yeah so we do handheld vhfs as well we've got our little link 2 product um, and that also has it's a dsc handheld so that has a little gps receiver built into it so should you have uh, a problem you've got that uh, that big red button to press uh, should you need assistance so you can see with these units, we've got a nice, uh, sort of quite slim line fist mic, uh, but also we have the ability on the fist mic to be able to change through uh, your different channels and things like that. Um, and also, uh, if we just exit this menu here, so you can see if I go up and down, I can change the channel number. I can automatically change it to channel 16 should I need to get in contact with the uh, the Coast Guard. Um, and we can also adjust the, uh, the the power output so we can have it on a high or low power, depending on the areas you're operating in. Um, also for the inland waterways, these um, user units have the uh, ATIS, or the ATIS functionality, which is basically like having your MMSI, but for use on inland waterways, which is a regulation throughout Europe, I believe. So you have to have one of these ATIS numbers, so you can program that in, and then when you're transmitting and receiving on there, they can look you up and, and understand who you are and, and what you're doing, basically. So the bigger unit, what facilities would this have over the uh, over the other one? 
The main difference is uh, that having that AIS receiver built into it, so being able to overlay other vessels' positions on the chart and give you that collision avoidance. Um, and also, uh, you have the uh, ability with these to um, uh, the, the connection on the back for enemy A2000, so integrating it into your systems is a lot easier. It's just a simple plug and play. On the back of here, there's a universal five pin connection for enemy A2000, and that just plugs straight in onto the network. So if you're installing it yourself, you're not having to sit there and work out which color wire goes where. It's a push in plug, it's idiot proof, hopefully. That's it, yep. Right, so moving on from the VHFs, uh, we also have a product called Sonic Hub, which is a a media system. Um, it's linked into the plotters via NMEA 2000. What that allows you to do, um, you can play MP3s um, and have full control through the plotter. So we have an iPad uh, docking station where you slide your iPod. Uh, we do lots of different fittings for all the different types of iPod that you can get. Um, we also have a, a USB connection in there. So if you have USB pen with MP3s on, you can load that onto there. Um, and it can then be controlled through the range of HTS products, so either the push button or the touch screen. You've got a menu that will come up and allow you to adjust the volume from the plotter. You can go through, change track, um, change the source, so whether you want to operate on your FM stereo, uh, your MP3s, you can choose all that through the plotter itself. You're not having to sit there, jump from your, your plotter screen down onto the CD player and then choose a different track. It's all done through the plotter. Have you got any music of screaming fishing reels? Unfortunately not, no. It wouldn't be too nice to the ears for myself. Probably something a bit more appealing that you see here in the local charts. A bit of Lady Gaga or something like that. Oh, okay. So, on the subject of NMEA, um, NMEA 2000 is a standard that's been put in place by the National Marine Electronics Association. So what it is, it's like a protocol basically which a lot of the manufacturers can adhere to, which means that you've got a bit of um, compatibility between brands. Um, and what we also have is um, a couple of instruments that we do in the low range range, the LMF instruments. So we've got things like engines now are outputting this NMEA 2000 data, so we can have uh, speed, uh, fuel data, all kinds of different uh, options just displayed on these little pages here. So it will get fuel flow, depth, um, and all that is coming because this is plugged into the same network that your engines are on, the plotters are on, and we can, rather than having it all displayed on the big screen, you have a nice little neat unit which you could configure to just display individual pieces of data.